Hello everyone and welcome to Creature Feature Volume 12, Torsos. Uh, this one was a hell of a lot of fun to make and came out relatively quickly compared to my other packs, so uh, let's jump right in. I've loaded the brush, press F2 or click on that. And um, I've got symmetry on, so I'm just simply dragging it out onto wherever you want to drag it out to. And I don't want the cube, so Control shift click the cube, click it again, and uh, delete hidden. Now normally I have all of my most used buttons up here in my own custom interface, but I've recently upgraded. So um, I haven't updated my interface yet. Anyway, let's carry on. So if you press W, you can quickly cycle through all the torsos. But let me just put some arms for context in, in the scene. Um, I can drag out arms right onto this guy, or I could just insert sphere so we can drag the arms out onto this or anything you like hide it inside his body symmetry on and I happen to have my arms brush loaded so I'm going to use that and I'm going to use these this pair of arms again because I just really like them always use them for testing purposes yeah, let's go with slightly exaggerated length. Well, that's actually about right. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's go back to this guy. So often, when you go switch between stuff, the uh, scale is ruined. Simply scale it back up. And now with a gizmo held, we can really quickly uh, cycle through torsos, but you need to—you can't be in draw mode. You need to be in W or E or R pressed uh, mode, gizmo mode, essentially. So you know they won't all be exactly perfectly aligned because they're different proportions and so on. But you can get an idea. Like mm, I quite like this it's a really sluggish kind of troll creature or ogre or something. Um, it's more like a realistic obese male um, let me get this sphere out of our way so scale it down and hide it there hide it there there we go out of the way so now we go back to this it might have a scale problem again see that's just Z brush thinking that it's really funny. So just scale it back up. It's as if you switch subtools. But if you stay within the same subtool, you shouldn't get that error. You know, it switches nicely. Um, this is one of my favorites. It's a fairly simple one. Um, this is based off a of Prisoner of War. A few blurry black and white photos I saw online, so I tried my best to Sculpted. It. It's amazing how these scapulas uh, stick out um, when you lose that much weight. What happens to the body? Oh, sometimes uh, it flips them as well. Z brush, not me. <laughs> so what you got to do is just turn symmetry off. Um, click that. So you're right in the middle of the torso. Hold down shift and spin 180. You can see it down there. There we go. Behave. Behave, please. This one is called Prey. I can't remember why, but that's what it's called. Quite like this one as well. Not only for the obvious reasons, but yeah, sometimes elegance and lack of noise is better. Um, yeah, mutant pregnant thing. Well, it doesn't really look pregnant, it actually looks uh, so obese. Yeah, make of this what you will. This is also one of my favorites. Uh, really aggressive, demonic, succubus kind of vibe going on.
So yeah, I'm just going through these quickly, uh, so you can simply see exactly what you're getting. Of course, you get this the Z sub tool as well. It's not just the insert mesh brush as usual, um, and OBJs and FBXs for if you want to use them in other programs. Quite like this one as well. Exo plate thing. Also one of another of my favorites, brutish hellish creature. Kind of flesh made armor. Okay. Another aggressive spiky one. see this sprouting quite a lot of bony undead kind of creatures or demonic give birth to completely different ideas and so on ah simple brute His brother, that's Karkarak's chest actually, but refined from the um, actual since the animation. Quite like these posterior. I enjoy given any opportunity to use the word posterior. This is his uh, posterior. This one was quite hard to. Make it look not like crap, um, and eventually, you know, balancing noise versus clean areas versus folds. Uh, sometimes it can just be paint yourself into a corner, and eventually it came out fine. I quite like what it is now. Fleshy underneath, scaly on top. So this one will have some interesting uses for people, I, th I guess. One of my favorites as well. HP Lovecraftian. Thing going on. Another partially eaten torso because you always need those right kind of makes you want to do just a pure zombie or undead pack it's purely based on par lots of different parts for undead I wonder if that's a bad or good idea if it's even desired or not I like this one a lot hollow kind of like a mix between dooms creatures and Hell knows what. Plate. Whoops. Strange little membranes there. Ah, it's like a stony barbarian possible creature of some kind. I like this one quite a bit, especially this side. I really like this part. Another strange one. Ah. So, it's like three or four of these torches have 
base heads included, and I figured, why not? And um, if you don't want them, you can see they're polygroup, simply just delete that and get rid of them. And then finally, it's also one of my favorites, one of the last, one of the last ones I did. I really like how his back is constructed. How the it's almost like inverse lat sort of. Well, not quite. Yeah, it's going the other way. Again, I th yeah, his head should be polygrouped so you can just get rid of it quite easily. But I kept it in because I just really liked it. So yeah, that, those are all the torsos. Um, let's go for, again, back to a human one. Let's use this one, why not? So once you've decided upon it, if it's not like something that's overhanging, I, you need to meld these, it's the same old thing, just um, you need to merge these two together, so merge, merge down, just say OK, or always OK, clear the mask if you have any, so we want to dynamesh these together, or you can Z remesh it and reproject it onto that mesh, but let's, let's try dynamesh, let's start with a low value first and see what it does, because dynamesh in ZBrush is constant, i.e. Depending on the size of the mesh, Dynamesh will always, it's always, it's a cube of, it's a grid of, it's a cuboid grid dividing it all, and it's always the same relative, not relative scale. I'm not explaining this very well, but basically click that button, see what it does. So, it's too low, so we need to increase this quite a lot. Let's try a thousand. Ah! So this is oh, a half a million polys. I'm undoing just to see how much detail I lost. I mean, it's not the end of the world. Most people probably don't care for the detail, or I guess some do. Um, so I want to dynamic it a bit higher than that. Let's try 2,000. Bang. Wait for it to do its thing. didn't do its thing, because now it should do its thing. So 1.8 million. So let me undo. Lost node. It's a bit blurrier. We can go higher, but for now I'm going to work with this. Because, yeah, it's fine. So I'm afraid I do not have my tablet plugged in. So I can't, I'm sculpting with a mouse, which is terrible. I mean, I'm very sorry, but you guys get the idea. Um, I'm just using a clay fill brush, or just use the clay brush. Or any brush, you know. Oh, it really is difficult with a mouse. Um, let me use the clay build up, turn the alpha off. Or you can just smooth it out. I swear for the next, uh, oh, I didn't turn symmetry on. For the next presentation, I am absolutely plugging my tablet in. It's my setup, is not, I didn't turn symmetry on, that's clever. In, hidden in here, brush, smooth, smooth stronger, this is quite, there we go. You will lose detail where you meld it of course, that's unavoidable, but, see, you just re-sculpt that back in, you either, there's a few ways you can do that, um, let me, fill this up. Again, I've got symmetry off. I am... I am embarrassed. And... I should be ashamed. Uh, 
There we go. Hmm. It's melded. It's whatever you want it to meld it to. It's easy as that. I'm smoothing and clay brushing or clay filling. Just a move brush or whatever you're comfortable with. There's so many ways to do everything in 3D. Some are more efficient than others, but as long as you get there in a reasonable, reasonable amount of time, it's all good. Um, uh, another way would have been to keep them uh, not dynameshed, copy the sub tool, control shift D, um, Z remesh it to an acceptable, to quite a low poly. Let's, let's do it, let's see what happens. Oh, sorry. Progress bar is going. Ah, some coffee. Decaf, as I've trying to, um, or am. Destroying most dopamine inputs that are quick into my body. Ca caffeine is one of them. Okay. So we, now we have a nice low poly mesh. So... Whatever is visible, but I'm gonna solo the low poly. So now, if you go to project, project all, it's gonna project all the high poly detail onto this new low poly. Now, Control D the low poly, just divide it once, project all again. Each time, it'll take a little bit longer. Control D again, project all again. Take its time. Lovely. And let's do it once more. It's going to take a little bit longer to a million projectile. You can go as high as you like, whatever is sensible. So we could have used this overall method of copying Z remeshing before we dynamesh or without dynamesh at all. And then smoothing out. Uh, on this mesh, which could be easier, could be harder. I hope it doesn't crash now. Hurrah, it did not. So I'm going to stick to this for now because it'll take too long. This. See a difference? I'm switching between the old one and the new one. Up close, you'll probably see a difference. Yep, so if you go one level higher, you'll get all the detail, plus the bonus of having subdivision level, so I'm gonna hide that one, this is our new one, so shift D go back in poly levels brilliant, love it I mean it's not game ready topology but it's great to work with in ZBrush if you just wanna uh, change broader forms you know cause it's always harder to work with high poly so then you just press D to go up in your subdivisions. Well, it's not harder, but certain operations are just easier. Broader strokes with lower poly. So anyway, we've got this guy. And, um... Fuck, what did I want to say? Ah, I remember. <laughs> Let's say it's a, it's a more complex mesh and you want to... There's some details... I don't know... Over here that you want to extract. So F2 for brushes. Extract. Drag rectangle. This is a great brush. Now press G once. Switches mode. Now draw out whatever the hell it is you want to extract. It'll think a while thought and now it draws out all that detail anywhere else now you might have to fuck it's not a terrible job with that let's try that again let's extract this Okay. 
<laughs> They've done such a bad job of that. Uh, let's turn the intensity down. Well, it's not what I wanted, but it's given me... No, I actually didn't want that, but it gave me something I wanted, which is just, like, skin detail. Let's go G again. Let's extract. Just that. I said it's there. It's just really subtle. That's fair enough. Let's up the intensity. Ah, okay. I'm going to control D, subdivide the mesh once more, just so I can... Ah, okay, so the extracted resolution is why it's low, so I'm going to unsubdivide. So, I'm doing this really badly and roughly, but you get the idea. You can really quickly add some level of detail back in quite quickly, and then smooth some of... well, smooth... Um, peaks. We'll keep some of that pockmark in detail. It's a great brush. And I'm not doing this symmetrically on purpose because I've... one of the greatest ways to... I wouldn't say realism but make something look authentic is to break symmetry. Obviously you don't want to do this early on, but once you're at this stage of detailing, definitely break symmetry. You do not want to have details the same on either side. It just, it, it looks bad. And sometimes you don't realize what's well, looking bad, but that's one of the key things you should not do. So break symmetry when it comes to detailing, absolutely. Everything will just look way better. See already that works. It's more work, but it's fun work, you know, once you've got the base body down. It's, it shouldn't feel like a chore, it should it's just like a little extraction. I've, I should have used this when I made these torsos, <laughs> I would have saved a lot of time. Most of it is hand sculpted, like every little stroke, which is just silly of me when you can do stuff like this. Although, you will usually have to go back in and accentuate stuff like the standard brush on a fairly low setting because I'm using my mouse. Wherever you've drawn those bits out, just try and accentuate go up a bit. Accentuate them a bit, smooth them out. Don't go crazy with noise everywhere because that always looks terrible as well. Your eye develops over time and you get an... you just... Eventually you know when the balance of noise versus clean areas is in harmony. If it's just like noise everywhere, there's no place for the eye to rest and it usually does not look good on anything, whether it's a vehicle, creature, you name it. Anyway, it's already got way too much noise for this type of model compared to these pieces, but yeah, this was my haphazard clunky approach, sorry for all the mishaps along the way, but hey, I'm only human as well. Quite like these two together. Anyway, that concludes some ways you can use torsos, um, and I really hope you enjoy this back. I mean, I find it so useful, just very quickly switching torsos, deciding upon one, and just seeing what you can come up with, stuff, stuff you wouldn't have thought of, and so on. I have to go process this video and get ready for work tomorrow. Um, thank you for watching, and have a good evening.